Hello and thanks for joining me. Um, so yeah, it's 2017, Happy New Year, and I have um, finished up my first um, book that, I, uh, that I've read for 2017 on my 27 Must Read TBR, and it is A Little Larger Than the Entire Universe, Selected Poems by Fernando Pessoa. Um, this edition that I read was edited and translated by Richard Zenith and published by Penguin Books in 2006. And so I would like to thank Penguin Books for publishing this work so that I can could experience it this year, this past over the past um, few days. But this is not the icon cover in the library. This is a title page. This is not a cover. So this is my sort of standard... Um, <laughs> issue that I seem to have uh, with uh, publishing companies that sometimes seem to want to give short shrift to their electronic editions um, that I don't think they would do the same thing for print books. So um, there's actually really nice cover art for the thumbnail for this work, but when you actually open the work, um, this is what you get for the cover, which is actually a title page. So yeah. Recurring theme, I know. Yeah, so um, you know, I want really wanted to start off the year with a with some with with poetry because poetry is not something that I have read um, all that much. And so um, you know, when I was uh, after last year, I read the Book of Disquiet by Fernando Pessoa, and I saw that there was this collected works of poetry. Uh, of his, uh, you know, that had been published, and so I did uh, want to to go ahead and read it because I had um, I had really found the Book of Disquiet to be so profound and so meaningful and so enjoyable to read that I wanted to see what the poems would, some of his poem poetry would be like because um, it, like I said, I had never never read it so um you know so i chose that to really start off my year and it's, it's really been a great a great uh, a great experience to kick off the year um spending some time with these poems um what they are though if, if you don't know fernando pessoa he was a portuguese um sort of intellectual writer poet um, who lived in the early part of the 20th century. I believe his years of life were 1888 to 1935, so he died relatively young. Um, and during his lifetime, he published, he had some things published, but not a whole lot. But whenever he, uh, you know, whenever he passed away, um, thousands of, of, of papers were found in his, you know, in his possession, um, and they're still being organized, and stuff is still being published now. Um, his work didn't come to us in English until, like, the 1980s, and so this guy who, who, who edited and translated this uh, work of poetry, Richard Zenith, is actually the one, I believe, who did some of the initial translations. Anyway, he has a long history with this work, and so, you know, I felt confident that I was reading a pretty good edition. Um, but the thing about Fernando Pessoa that I, one of the things that I think is so amazing about him is he had these heteronyms. So he had he had he was a being of multiple components, and these different components of himself had their own names. They weren't writing names. They weren't nom de plume. They were actual facets of himself that he gave completely distinct personalities to. They had their own biographies. They have, uh, you know, their own birth and de de death dates. There's multiple of them. There's dozens of them. I think there's around 70 of them. But um, four of them are poets. Um, and so four of them are represented, represented in this book of poetry. So we have Fernando Pessoa himself. We have poems by Fernando Pessoa him, himself, although the editor does make the point of saying that this Fernando Pessoa orthonym, it's called, um, in this work is not the, you know, real Fernando Pessoa. Um, but we have Fernando Pessoa. Then we have um, another um, another person, <laughs> um, a heteronym, um, whose name is Alvaro de Campos, who was a um, bisexual naval engineer. And his poetry um, is... Um, 
sort of, um, you know, for one, it embraces the modern age, which I, I found um, really cool. And I'll talk about that bit, a bit more in a moment. And then another uh, one of his heteronyms that's a poet that uh, has his poems in this in this collection is Ricardo Raiz, who is a physician who was a monarchist, had some uh, sort of controversial political views and ended up fleeing to Brazil at one point. And then in Fernando Pessoa's uh, papers, there was a address for him in Peru. So apparently he also went to Peru at some point. Um, and then um, the um, fourth one is Alberto Cairo. Um, and he is a uneducated sort of country person, and his poems are also represented in this collection, and they're very sort of nature-based, um, very, um, you know, sort of fundamental in this sense. So um, each one of these, though, the cool part about reading this was that each one of these heteronyms, you know, they're all technically... Fernando Pessoa, but they each have their own uh, poetry style. They each have very distinctive poetry styles. So if you just picked this this up and read it and read these poems, you would think you were reading poems by four different people because they're they're completely four different points of view. Um, I believe that it's um, one of the one of the heteronyms um, considered Fernando Pessoa to be too rational. So you know they criticize each other. Um, so, you know, it, that, that's just such an inward, a beautiful sort of complex inner, inner life that I think Fernando Pessoa had that I really think is reflected in his work. I, I know it was in the Book of Disquiet, who was actually, the Book of Disquiet was actually written by yet another heteronym called um, Bernard, Bernardo Suarez. Um, the Book of Disquiet is actually um, a sort of an autobiography of Bernardo, Bernardo Suarez, who is this sort of low-level accounting clerk um, in a um, in a business in, in Lisbon and writes this sort of diary autobiography, The Book of Disquiet, which I read last year, which I did a, a video chat on, which I will link to down, um, down below if you're interested and you didn't see it and you're interested in learning more about that. Um, but you know my experience with these poems. So, like I said, they're they're each each poet is actually you know really different. But but I think one sort of overarching theme I think with Fernando Pessoa's style is this sort of identity. You know, like he's he's obviously comfortable in having multiple selves. Um, he doesn't feel so. His poems are about identity, but they're not so much about like finding himself. You know, um, they're not poems that are to me where a person seeking who they are. Um, because I think that he's comfortable in fragmenting himself into his various components, um, you know, quite nicely. But one thing that that uh, then leads to is that when, you know, I think that there's re one recurring theme about his identity is that, you know, he's not himself. Um, he's never himself because himself is too complex to to say. So if he's calling himself, you know, I am like Fernando Pessoa, meaning I am no one. So, because he's more than that, so he's more than Fernando Pessoa, he's, you know, multiple selves. So, this sort of uh, identity thing, I think, um, you know, I, I really um, experienced that while reading these these poems. And then, um, you know, another, um, another ex sort of emotion that I had around these poems was sort of impermanence, how um, not just his own individual identity is, is fractured and multiple and... Um, you know, legion, um, but everything is. So, you know, because he, 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 you know, through his poetry, um, you know, I really feel that, um, everything is like, is almost unreal because, you know, a one person looking at it is, is defining it as one thing is constructing a dream of it. In other words. So, um, really sort of anything like a train or, um, you know, whatever object it is or whatever situation it is that he finds himself in, um, you know, that it's just, there's a fluidity to, to reality, um, I think in his work, which I, which I just, I just love that experience. So that was, that was just, it's just, it was just a great experience to start off my year. Um, I do want to, though, I think one of, part of one of the poems is very, um, um, sort of, Beautiful, and it's actually uh, the title of this uh, collection is called "A Little Larger Than the Entire Universe," and that's actually a line from from a poem. And I'm just going to read um, a quick excerpt from the section of this poem that contains that line because I think it's just so beautiful. And this poem. Um, 
this poem is actually by Alvaro de Campos. So um, it's this heteronym called Alvaro de Campos who, who actually wrote this particular poem, but it's sort of, um, it's got the feel of, of really uh, the whole collection to me. So, all right, so to read the poem. Um, so the name of this, uh, this name of this poem is actually called Original Sin. This is a, an excerpt from it. So it says, I got off the train and said goodbye to the man I'd met. We'd been together for 18 hours and had a pleasant conversation, fellowship in the journey. And I was sorry to get off, sorry to leave, this chance friend whose name I never learned. I felt my eyes water with tears. Every farewell is a death. Yes, every farewell is a death. In the train that we call life, we are all chance events in one another's lives. And we all feel sorry when it's time to get off. All that is human moves me because I'm a man. All that is human moves me, not because I have an affinity with human ideas or human doctrines, but because of my infinite fellowship with humanity itself. The maid who hated to go, crying with nostalgia for the, for the house where she had been mistreated. All of this inside my heart is, is death and the world's sadness. All of this lives because it dies inside my heart. And my heart is a little larger than the entire universe. So, beautiful. Um, love that. Um, and this collection of poetry is filled with images like that. Um, great way to start off my year. Um, I, um, I definitely, um, will keep this book of poetry, you know, close. Poetry is one of those things that, um, I don't, I don't read enough of. I don't have a lot of experience with. I need to get more poetry in my life, so that's something that I'm definitely going to do. Um, all right, I'll stop with that. I will have, um, I will have more coming up uh, soon. So until then, take care. Bye.